Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly Video for the 16th of May, the middle of the month here in 2023. Let's get a midweek market update, starting with the stock market. We had a split trading session today with the S&P. Well, we'll start this way. With the Russell, that was down 1.2%, with the brunt of the selling taking the Russell down to the prior support levels on the back of the financials, which are a large part of the Russell, we see that the Russell index itself pretty much was red all across the board. And the Russell and the financial sector, we can take a quick little peek at XL. From XLF, the financial KRE is gonna be our regional banks that are struggling off those lows. So that's one theme. And that's what we talked about last week on the update as well, the financial weakness but the other side of the coin is the technology strength. That's the only sector that was bullish in today's session at the close and stayed that way all day long. That's the XLK, that's your technology sector with the NASDAQ leading the pack to the upside. In fact, if you want to look at the one minute chart on the NASDAQ, we'll go to five minutes just for the quick note. We had a trend day to the upside at the same time we had the Russell trend day to the downside all the way down. So that's the split that we continue seeing with the technology off on the strong side. Again, here's your daily chart, here's your intraday chart. That's actually a new swing high. We'll check that. That's actually not a 52 week high, just, just a new 2023 high. So correction, not a 20, 52 week high, a new swing high, price high for the year, which is of note. That's something I just about missed. And someone brought that up in the Theo Trade chat room in this afternoon. Nonetheless, the XLK, technology shares, and that's some of the broader technology names, is making that high as well. Now, that's on the back of some leading stocks. In today's session, the strongest names for Advanced Micro, that's AMD. Beneath it, or after it, was Google. We then had Amazon, which pushed up to its new high. Is that a new high of the year? Oh, just barely. Oracle continues showing trading strength or relative strength. That's just in that 100 per share. NVIDIA also saw additional bullish upside action. And then we discussed this in my session with respect to the strong stocks getting stronger, new 52 week highs. That's what the red lines refer to and why we do the scans here in the evening videos, because the stock that's making new 52 week highs has a better shot or probability to keep making those 52 week highs. And that becomes a condition to be bullish or buy the pullback into these trending stocks under the logic of watch is strong now tends to get stronger later. NVIDIA just pushed itself to a new high as well. But so did Microsoft. Off the chart, these things are leading at least the NASDAQ to the upside at the same time, just about everything else across the board. Again, keep in mind the comparison. And we'll just focus on this right here. XLK as a sector has new highs right here. But right beneath that, the financials keep a watch on that as I click the financial and boom, off to just about new lows. That's the split in the market and that continues. And as while we're on the topic, XLY is consumer discretionary. It's gone sideways for the bulk of the year. XLI has done the same. B is going to be our materials and those are close to lows. Remember the technology sector is off at the highs. So it's the strongest. Energy is off at the lows just about. It's making just about a few days from now, 52 week, or I should say new 2023 price lows. P is going to be staples. It's the other stock, or at least the sector that is up near the highs, just to compare. So is technology. And that's even if we go into a recession, we probably go into a recession. Even if we do go into a recession, people still need to buy products. And if you want to look at which products they'd be buying, Procter and Gamble, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Costco, even if we're in a recession, we still got to go shopping. We still have to eat. We still have to drink. So if we do fall into the recessionary cliff, then these stocks would make sense as relative leaders. Leaders just mean the other stocks and sectors are off at the mid or the lows. These stocks are up at the highs. We can take a look at some of those, which includes Coca-Cola near the highs and PepsiCo, which is just like Coca-Cola. It's a beverage company and it's extending those highs. Back to the other charts. V is going to be healthcare. It's toward the middle. And finally, U, which is utilities, has taken a big 
in terms of the ETF, double day drop on the chart. So that's where we are at the middle of May 2023. So the sectors most are at the mid to lows of their 2023 range. Forget the E last year, 2022. Just focus on what happened this year. In fact, this is underwater, as in it's under where the market opened in January. XLK is a well above. In fact, if we want to look at a percent basis, just about, roughly speaking, the XLK technology sector, that's up 25% from the beginning of January. What about the NASDAQ? The NASDAQ itself, which is a much larger basket of stocks, it's up 23%. So the NASDAQ is up 23%. Of course, individual equities may be up a little more than that. For example, NVIDIA is up 100%. I'm looking at it right there in the chart. 100% doubling from roughly about 150 per share to 300. That's the theme. And that's what I continue to highlight in my sessions and the evening videos. Strong gets stronger. And we have a split market. Weak gets weaker. And from the high, or let's just be fair, from the January print, the financial sector or the financial stocks in general, writ large, are down about 7.5%. To be unfair, from the high to that current low, that's being unfair. But they're off about 14%. You can take a look individually at which sectors and which stocks show relative strength just in that framework. So the NASDAQ is up there. The Dow continues to be flat at the lows. It's only 30 stocks. And the Russell is heavily invested or heavily ma made up of small cap stocks, which is it is at the lows as well. Now, outside of the stock market, we have crude oil. Crude oil is a good barometer for inflation in the broader picture. You can always look at the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, or the PPI, the Producer Price Index, and other core inflationary measures. But that's hard. It's complicated. A lot of things goes into that. Look at crude. Crude is a good harbinger, or at least a good viewpoint or vantage point vehicle. If there is inflation, crude is going to be going up. And that's bad for the broader economy to pay much, much, much higher prices at the pump to fuel the car, to fuel the truckers and everything else to put that goes into gasoline prices. And it's good to see gas come down, at least in terms of the economy, because fuel or prices at the pump go down. And that's generally speaking a good sign. So that is a, I don't want to call it deflationary, but it's something to watch. If this is coming down, that is generally what we're seeing in all of the economic reports, that inflation is coming down, still high, but much lower than it was just a few months ago. And especially in the raging growth of inflation, and 2021 and 2022. Gold, speaking of inflation, just traded back to its prior high, 2,050 per ounce, and it's in a trading range on the broader perspective. Midpoint's about that 1850, which may see the next move in gold back to the middle. And the bond market here can't really get off the mat. And we did have a sell swing down from this 108 back to the 104, and we've achieved that and a little more. All we're looking at is for the bond market, like the equity market, to be in a trading range until we get the breakout. So it looks like this on the range, we'll say that goes back, and the next move is potentially back to the lows. And that midpoint is here, same, but in reverse for the S&P, which itself, Don and the team here has shown this each session, and we all see it, we don't like it, but we see it, that we have this pretty clear, well-defined trading range of rectangle or box about that 4200 and about three, let's say seven, 3750 and about 4000 in the futures. That means the next move is potentially, again, the reward pathway to the downside. That's kind of a quick look at the markets. Another look at ZN shows that the 10-year treasury note, that's your bond, or that's the note potentially coming down off the range high. And the ZB is the 30-year bond, which is not dissimilar to the tradable. And I actually will trade the TLT. In the week ahead, just taking a quick look at the calendar and decoding it. Just I went ahead and decoded this for us. 
What's going up? On Wednesday, we have U.S. housing starts. We have Cisco. I thought we can do it this way. Look at the stocks having their earnings. Today was Home Depot. Tomorrow is Target. And then Cisco. After that, Walmart. And later next week, or early next week, is Lowe's and then NVIDIA. And then Costco weighs in after that. So some retail names are coming up. We had financials already report. We're going to have retail. We've had technology report. So right up ahead of us is some retail names, including just saw Home Depot. They missed down 2%. And we have Walmart, Lowe's, and Costco coming up just in a few trading sessions. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo Video Update for May 16th, 2023.